Today, we're gonna talk about something really exciting. I'm just kidding, because it's just sandpaper. But guys, would you know how many people make a mistake with the very one of the very first processes of doing a project by choosing the wrong sandpaper? So many people just jump in and use what they have, and next thing you know, they've got lines and, and marks in their beautiful wood pieces that are gonna be really hard to fix. So with reading the directions and maybe using a little bit of that knowledge that you take away from this video, hopefully your next project won't end up on the curb because you don't know where to go from damaging it because of a bad grit sandpaper. So with sandpaper, the biggest thing you remember is the lower the number, the more coarse it is, the higher the number, the more fine it is. So it's easier to start more fine and work your way up to a higher grit so that way you're not going to damage it because you're not going to damage it with a fine sandpaper. You will damage it with a coarse. So I like to just typically be in the 100 to say 200 range. I find that that typically takes care of most of my project's needs. Otherwise, if I need to go through several layers of paint or varnish, I choose to use a stripper because to me that's more gentle on the wood. That's taking the surface levels off, not actually destroying or damaging the wood. So my most common one that I start with, honestly, is about 100. This is... This is pretty rough for, for sandpaper, but it just does not damage the way anything under 100 does. And then there's 150, which you can feel the difference instantly when you run your fingers by it. This is a much softer and has um, not as coarse of you know particles on it and then 200 is kind of my finishing you know piece it's really good and that can go up from there but really like 220 200 range that typically gets me by for putting paint or stain on my product so another thing you want to remember is the better the brand sometimes the better the sandpaper I do like to stick with a name brand in a lot of cases just because I feel like it's it's on a better quality paper and it doesn't rip as much and you can typically always find the grit if you have loose piece, pieces hanging around on the back of the sandpaper itself so example this one's a 220 and that's a 150 so if you just have little pieces chilling around look at the back and that'll give you a good direction of where to go. There's also wet sanding paper and this is very rare that you're probably going to use it but if you see it in the store I want you to understand what it's for. So that is when you're doing really detailed projects like maybe a guitar finish. Envision that where it needs to look like glass. So that's where this actually comes into play. And the point is that when moisture or anything that you're putting on a piece of wood, it's going to pull out of the grain a little bit. So when you put a little bit of wetness, dampness, not wet, like not puddles of water, on a piece of wood, that's when you're gonna sand it because that grain's gonna raise a little bit and that way when you put that finish on it at the end, it won't do that again. It's gonna do it one time basically, you sand it so that way when you put the finish on it, it's not going to come back up again. So that is something that I use, but not a whole lot. And you probably, unless you're doing really, really detailed work, this probably isn't going to be what you're going to use. But I want you to know what it is because it does, ha it's a 600 grit, so it's super fine. I mean, it doesn't even really hurt your fingers when you drag it. It's really, it's really sweet. So next time you're in the hardware store, pick up a package of assorted let me get it in the screen. Assorted sandpaper. Again, these numbers are pretty good to go into, and I think you're going to be safe. I stick with the name brands as much as I can, but even though this one was a do it best, it's actually made by Gator, which is still a very good sandpaper brand. So don't let a private branding, you know, steer you away if the product itself is, is quality. So I hope that gets you started. I hope that steers you away from anything under that 100 grit sandpaper so you don't have any mistakes because I want your projects to actually make it to the finish line. Thanks for tuning in to another episode as we talked about today's sandpaper. Don't let it scare you. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.